At Drew Pritchard's base in North Wales, business is booming. But as ever, the pressure is on to keep the showroom stocked up. To keep up with demand, I have to buy wherever and from whoever I can. It's always challenging to go and buy from other antique dealers. They know the business, they have their margins, and I have to buy something with a profit in it for me. The challenge this week is going to be finding something that I can afford to buy from them. Today, Drew is taking old friend and sidekick T along for the ride. They're off on a four-hour drive east across the country to New Bolingbroke, Lincolnshire, to see if one of Drew's long-time contacts is willing to sell any of his precious wares. OK, so where are you taking me, uh, Skip right in today? Today, we're going to go and see a guy called Jack Rundle. I had a pitch next door to this guy right. for five or six years at Newark Fair. All right. Yeah. Yeah, my name's Jack Rundle, Junction Antiques at New Bolingbroke, Boston. Yeah, I think Drew, he'd be interested in nearly everything I've got. It's price, mostly, I think, would be the problem. Antiques and bygones. Very nice. He's got plenty of stock. Lots of it. Ooh, loads of things. Jack. Morning. How are you doing? How are you? All right, good to see you. Nice to see you. Yeah, you Hi, Jack. All right. How are you doing? Yeah, good, thank you. We're in the area, thought we'd call in. That's good, yeah. Do you, remember, right. do you remember me? No, no. You sure? Yeah. You should do. Yeah. Newark? No, no I don't Six know. and a half years, stood next to you. Uh, no. You made a big <laughs> impact there. Big oh, impact. Yeah, yeah. Big no, impression. I wonder if we can have a look around. Have a look around. Is that all right? Yeah. yeah. Help myself. Yeah. Have a look, see what you can find. Now, you've got loads of stuff here I like, Jack. Good. Loads of stuff. Depends if the prices are right. I'll buy what I like. It's always the best way, isn't it? I wasn't... I didn't start to make any really, really real money until I just started buying what I liked. Yeah. Around the corner, Drew's expert eye spots something tucked away. Big banks of drawers I like. Oak, unus yeah. unusual little uh, grip handles on them. Ladies love to buy banks of drawers. Originally used in libraries for index cards, storage units like this can go for around £450. How much is it, Jack? 500 500 Ooh, it's too much for me. It's too much. Too much. OK. I need, I need stuff with more Oof. of a margin in it that I can do the work on. <coughs> Those paper mache? Yeah. Carnival. Yeah, it, yeah, no, yeah. No, that's what they are, are they? I had a clown last year. Yeah. Big clown head, a really good one. Yeah. I've still got it. <laughs> <laughs> Look nice if you've got... How much is the one on the left? Yeah. Uh, I'd do that one for 200. Oh, it's not terrible. On the right-hand side? Stand me at three. I'll take my money back. Yeah. She's the... So, the 600 the two. <laughs> <laughs> 400, it's brilliant. <laughs> um, I like the one on the right because it's slightly scarier. What I like about them is that I don't want them to look nice and sort of people yeah. laugh at them. You want to look at them and sort of... You're lucky there, then. Uh, yeah, yeah. scary, weird. Price-wise, they're sort of on the money uh, can, for that condition and, and, and what they are, so I'll have to move on. I can't buy those. Or well, like this, Jack. Yeah. Ships like... I've just sold a load of them. Have you got any more? No, that's all I've got. Just the one. This 20th century light was used to illuminate map tables on a warship. Once restored, it could be worth up to £195. So how much? Oh, £50. I've got to be cheap. Yeah. All right. Sold. It's not no. even going to bother bidding you on that. So I did well out of the last one. Isn't that cool looking? That's yeah. lovely. Don't you like that? Really nice. Yeah. Is that good? It is. Would you have that in your house? I would, yes. See, I've sold it already. <laughs> <laughs> Strangely, I bought something which I think was a bargain and then when other things I'm looking at, thinking, well, why is that so expensive? So it's really difficult, this. This is tricky. And obviously, I want to sort of keep a relationship going with him. So trying to keep buying bits, that's tough. The fun isn't over yet. Jack leads the boys into another building crammed full of items. And sure enough, Drew spots a potential gem. <laughs> these are cool as well. What about these? Are they yeah. sellable? Are they a bit, too, a bit too chunky? Ex-Army. This pair of 1950s cabinets from a Ministry of Defence factory once stored nuts and bolts. When cleaned, they'll be worth up to £300 for the pair. What do you give me for those? Uh, ooh, 
I, what do you... 130 to 2. No. How does 80 pound grab you? Not very well. <laughs> 100 pound to have a deal with you. 90 pound. Go on then. Thank you. Right, we'll have those. I mean, I think we'll probably weigh them in for that, couldn't we? Don't tell me that. Oh. I'll be upset. Next, Jack takes Drew and T to his private yard, and Drew loves to go where the public aren't allowed. Ooh. What are these, Jack? These are fun fair cars. Yeah. Slider out, yeah. It's in better condition than the van. <laughs> it is a bit strange just having the one side. Are they yeah. saleable just having the one side? These dummy cars were fixed to fairground rides. Those that can be restored could sell for up to £150 each. How much, Jack, for, for the lot, all of them? Um, Do I need to sit down? No, I shouldn't think that. £200. Got to be cheap. That is kind of, I'm going to bid you on a little bit. 175 and I'll take them all today. Done. Go on, then. Yeah. Lovely. All right. You That's could fantastic. just drive them down to the van. <laughs> <laughs> the condition is absolutely appalling. It's terrible, but that's still, they're still nice, you know? There's still something about them. Another deal done, and Jack brings the boys into the front of the main shop. Yes. Loads of stuff. I like that, Jack. What's that? The floor standing lamp here. It's interesting. The base is a bit <coughs> dull, but the rest of it's all right. What do you know about this one? It's a nice lamp. <laughs> <laughs> and it's for sale. Yeah. yeah. I had my ear on it. <laughs> in the 1920s, floor lamps like this were used in factories and by mechanics in garages. In working order, this one could retail for around £400. How much is it, Jack? That's what you won't like about it. Oh, here we go. 200. Oh, Jack. It's got to be yeah. Jack. <laughs> Jack. Yeah, but it cost me 160 plus. Oh. Did it really? Yeah, it did. Does it have to be that much money? Uh, 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 uh. 180 pound. Split it with me. 190. Have a deal. Deal. Sold. Thank you. All right. That's good. That's what we're looking for. It's a nice thing. See what I mean? Yes. Brilliant. Yeah. Very happy. Very cool. Very masculine. Very unusual. Very original. And all there, bar the shade, which I've honest. got. It's honest. <laughs> yeah, it's honest. Honest. And that's the item I've been looking for all day. That's the one item that I can turn into real profit. That one thing will pay for our whole day. OK, let's get loaded up then, T. Go on, bit of work now. Thanks for letting us have a look around. We'll see Sorry you. Sorry about the rain. <laughs> Don't worry, it's all no. right. Cheers, okay. Jack. See, see you then. Bye-bye. Yeah. Oh, how was today for you, then? It's always tricky to buy off of the dealers with enough margin in it for them. Those open pigeon holes. Yeah, I don't know see how many pigeons you're going to get in there either, really. <laughs> it's not very... It's a bit compact for a pigeon. <laughs> Maybe a London pigeon would pay for it. Back at the warehouse, Team Pritchard wait to see what Drew and T have in store for them this time. We got one of those. How rare is that? It's a ship's light, same as the last ones, and it just sold like that, didn't they? It took too long to get this all clean, shouldn't it? Polishing, polishing machine. machine. Just buff it. Is Gav the polishing machine? Yes, right. attached to another polishing machine. <laughs> OK. <laughs> well done. This is better. Even I like this. Even T likes this. I really like this. Weird engineering lamp thing. That's got profit left in it That's, and lots of yeah. it. 
I want it to look original. So hardly any cleaning. I don't want to see any machine polishing or anything on that at all. What else we got from Jack are these. A pair of X-Army pigeonholes, open pigeonholes. Just a bit of stripper on these. Take that down, give it a good clean. That's it. So you're not going to burnish it? That's oh, too no. complicated. Oh, no. No. <laughs> no. Spoil. No, you can't put that. Looks nice as it is. That would take days it to burnish one. It's it. not worth it. It really isn't worth it. Okay. The last thing we got is slightly left of centre. It's almost coming back to being right of centre. It's gone all <laughs> the way around. <laughs> Ta-da! 1920s, 30s, roundabout off a of fairground, cars. Well, they got MOTs. <laughs> yeah, all MOT, tax, roadworthy condition. Left or right hand drive. I love them. Really? Absolutely love them. For that sort of money, I had to buy them. Direct from the van into the workshop, Ollie the electrician works his magic on the ship's lamp. We'll strip the, the white paint off the inside and so it'll end up looking more like the outside. While Restorer Gavin starts on the fairground cars. Today, Drew is driving over 200 miles to East Pennard in Somerset to meet the owner of a country house, who just so happens to be an ex-antique dealer. He's taking Gavin with him. My name is Martin Dearden, and we're at Pennard House, which is in Somerset. Every antique dealer thinks he knows the value of things, but it's what you can get for them that counts. The house is the main pull, really, because it's not just his stock of antiques. It's the fact that the house has been in the family since 1620. Pennard House is a quintessentially British Jacobean country manor. The original structure dates back 400 years, with the east and west wings added in 1815. Since then, it has remained untouched. You know what it's like going to see other dealers or, or, or older dealers. Some of them can be really good, and others, you know, just sort of teach you a lesson or try and be clever. Could go one way or the other. Pennard House. Well, that's nice. I like that. Martin. Ah, good morning, Drew. Drew. Hi, nice Thank you for coming down. Pleasure. We have a big coach house and stables down at the bottom, and there's a lot of other junk in there too, and it's all been cleared out. It's in a shed in the yard, and you're welcome to have a look at that. Great. You know, always want to... You know yeah. me, I love all sorts of... Well, anything from an old country house <laughs> is my sort of thing. Well, we've got some nice things in the house. I must say, I'm afraid you're not allowed to buy them today. But you're very welcome to have a look around if you'd like to. Love to, yeah, yeah. Yeah, OK, well, yeah. well, make yourself at home. Sure. Lead on. Where All to? Right. Martin takes Drew and Gavin into his private sitting room. Oh, I can see something already that I really like. Just that chair's lovely. Very much my sort of thing. Go that one down. All the way to there. Go right back if you're after lunch snooze. <laughs> <laughs> This 1830s reclining chair is made by renowned furniture maker Robert Dawes. Being rare, it could fetch up to £1,500. Although Drew knows it's not for sale, he just can't help pushing his luck. I love it. It's very much my sort of thing. This is the type of thing that I try and buy whenever possible in this condition as well. Yeah. Sort of, I like sort of country house. Country house condition. I'm afraid we're going to be unlucky today, Drew. I'm not selling this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very fond of this chair myself. Yeah. Nice, huh? It's a man's chair, that one. That's a man's chair. There's loads of items in the house that I would happily say, do you want to sell it? Yes, we'll buy it. Boom, it's in the van. But I can't. We know that's off-limits. Time, then, to find some things that aren't off-limits. Out into the courtyard, and there's a surprise in store. Did you see what I got in here? Oh. Yes. <laughs> a little litter of puppies. Hello. Four little black ones Ooh. and four little yellow ladies. I like this one. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> and they're just like the cutest thing. Me and dogs, I just can't help myself. I just want to go and mess about with them. I'd happily take one home, but I just, Enzo wouldn't like it. Back to work. Back to work. Well, this is the shed over here. OK, so this is the stuff that's come from the stable. You have a route through here, Gav. Salvage hunting is about instinct, and Drew can sniff out a unique item in a second. That carved thing at the back is the back of a Sicilian marriage car carriage. Yeah, let's pull that out, Gavin, have a look. It is a lovely thing. Let's see more. 
Is it heavy? Just... Uh, you all right there? <laughs> I'm fine, yeah. Can you just hold it up for me for a second? I'm joking. No, put it down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's lovely, isn't it? Look at the heads on it. The little heads on it. And what you've got here, these are the parents, and the son is leaving, leaving home, and they're beating the old women away to get them out of the way. Don't need them. <laughs> the wedding carriage that the young people went away on, they would have one of these carved and fitted specially on the back. I wouldn't try and own one if I were you. They're hard to get rid of. I was looking at it thinking, <laughs> it's lovely, but there's no way I'd be able to sell that. No. But no, we'll put that back. I've got enough odd got ones. Unsaleables. I've got a few unsaleables. Every now and again, one leaves the building. I have a few unsaleables, too. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that is, Drew? Um... No. Is it something to do with riding? No. You turn it upside down, and that, that way up, and there used to be a little charcoal brazier to hang in here, yeah. and it was a French bed warmer. You pushed it down in the bed with the charcoal brazier burning, and it warmed the bed. Really? I've oh, never I'll seen one of those. They're very, very... I've never... They're very rare. Completely useless, but very rare. <laughs> 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 it's nice, isn't it? <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. There you go. I've learned something so today. The, yeah. There you go. You learn something new every day in this job. You just constantly learn. It's being around people with lots more experience than you can never be a bad thing. Having had enough of beautiful items that will be tough to sell, they move on to the stable workshop. Uh, well, here you are. There's a whole load of stuff in here, look. Yeah. I like these. Well, those, that sit, should sit on top of that bottom bit there. And they've got all these these iron corners. You can, you can lift it on if you want, Gavin. I can just have a look at the pair <laughs> together. In reality, that's the bottom. That's got the feet. Yeah, I like them. Great big, chunky, no-nonsense. These chests from the old stables would have stored riding tack. They could bring in around £1,200 for the pair. What, what sort of money are they? I mean, the bottom one is more beaten up than I thought, but the top one's in good condition. Well, I suppose we're looking at three to, three to four hundred for the two, aren't we? Something like that? Um, if we said three, I'll, I'll buy them at three, but that would be it. I'm quite happy with that. Great. Deal. We'll have those. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, now, any, while you're on a roll, anything else you the, see? There's, there's something underneath all this stuff here. What, this... that, that old chair frame? Yes. yes yeah. OK. Um, this here is uh, a steel and sprung. I've had that knocking around for a long time and it keeps getting pushed to the back and I keep thinking I must put some material on it. Yeah, yeah. But as you can see, I've never got around to it. I like it. I like that a lot. Oh, we're going to pull this out. Do you want to dig it yeah, out? I've yeah, I've had a sure. couple of these. I do like the shape. God, that's heavy. You OK with that? Yeah. I told you it was well buried. Yeah, that <laughs> has been there a while, hasn't it? <laughs> They're so simple. If it was done in a, good, in a good material, leather or something, it looked very smart. I had, I had one a couple of years ago and it had a nice uh, padded and pleated leather. Um, just a really simple, elegant frame. Metal rocking chairs like this were originally made in the 1850s with wooden slats and buttoned leather upholstery. Fully restored, it could be worth up to £1,000. Money-wise, where do you want to be on that one? That's a difficult one, isn't it? I mean, It is tricky, isn't um, it? It's a, there's a big price discrepancy between a good one and one of these and an it unfinished is. one and an unrestored one or one that's been painted, so... Are we looking towards the 250 to 3 on that one? Um, it's not out of the way, I think, if we went for... Um, if we could do sort of... 225... 250? Go on, stretch it. Good shot. Potentially a good chair. <laughs> Deal. Yeah, we'll have it. It's a great shape, and it's, it's in that condition again where it's so honest, I can't really not buy it. With an older dealer, they'll either try and be a little, you know, push you around a little maybe and try and bully you into something, or they're like Martin is. They're really helpful, accommodating, they're in, they enjoy the fact that you're enjoying the job. Have we seen everywhere now? I think you've been... I think I've got nothing much else to show you. I think you've, you've seen everything now. OK, OK. Well, what's under the cover? Ah, well, that's, that's my old MG, MGC. Oh, C. I'm Six afraid cylinder. that's not for sale either. Oh. But, um... It looks like you hardly use it, though. 
Well, we use it when the sun shines. So not often. <laughs> we hadn't been often this summer, no. <laughs> Can we have a look at it? Can we have a look? Yeah, yeah, sure. Drew's passion for cars means he can't resist a look. Oh, it's great. See the C. Everybody knows these are MGBs. This is a C, and it has this power bulge in the bonnet, and this as well, which you'll see, and it, the engine's much bigger. I remember my father having one in the yard, and I used to go and sit in it and pretend I was driving. Mm. But can't buy it. No, can't buy it, I'm afraid. I suppose we'll load up, Kev. Bring yeah. the van around. Yeah. Can we get the van to the gate here? You can bring the van into the yard. Great. OK, Absolutely. let's do that now. Hey, gentlemen. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice Thank to meet you. Very much. Nice to meet Hope you. Hope you do very well with it. I will do. I'm you sure can, you will. You can carry on clearing out your shed now. We'll have a go. You've made a, two, two good spaces in there. Thank you very much. <laughs> nice Thank to meet you. you. Thank you. Good Bye. luck. Take care. Bye. Long way to come, but it's worth it, I think. Always good when we're able to do that, yeah. which is to go in somewhere, buy fresh stock, new stock, interesting stock that has not been on the open market and is a bit different. And it's the sort of stuff I, I like and our customers love that sort of thing. Put up with having you in the house. <laughs> Four and a half hours later, back at base, Drew's wife, Rebecca, and handyman John eagerly await the lads and their new treasures. Da -da. Might not look like a lot, but there's a lot of stuff in here. This is really interesting. We went to see a guy called Martin Deard, and he's an old dealer. Mm -hmm. uh, lives in a pretty fabulous-looking house. So, 19th century, wrought iron with a little brass detail rocking chair. What I'm going to do is try to lightly burnish it at first. And see. And see what happens. But good looking. It's very, it's lovely, very decorative. But they did do a lot more decorative ones. I mean, the last one I had were paid 900 quid for, mm -hmm. but it was ready to rock. Ready to rock. Oh. <laughs> Didn't. I didn't even try. Terrible. I've had jokes like that for 900 miles. <laughs> really heavy duty. Shelved inside, mostly oak, the rest of it's pine. Totally original, made for the house. And I thought they'd make a great pair of sort of low cabinets. They would. No, I like those a lot. Yeah. Yeah, Hands bedside cabinets as well. Yeah, Looks just fab, handsome. Wouldn't they? Just yeah. handsome. And we bought some cider and some mead while we were down there. Yes, please. <laughs> Give these to Alex and he'll grow them. He'll just colour match that one up. But the wear on Look that. Look at that. Wonderful. Yeah. That's his Sunday papers in there. Ooh. Ooh. Off me rocker. It just keeps coming, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Wasting no time, Alex, the French polisher, has come in to start restoring the stable chests. Thanks, John. I had a shelf missing, so we're replacing the shelf with a piece of timber that matches the age and uh, replace the feet because the other one's in really good condition. The colour of it's great, the condition of it's great. This one's had a harder life. The important thing is that we use old timber and old screws for the repairs. Drew and T are off on another adventure, 200 miles east of Frithville in Lincolnshire to meet a demolition scrapyard contact. So we're going to go and see a guy called Alan Thompson. He has worked in the demolition trade, uh, and he's also an enthusiast, stroke hoarder, got a bit of a salvage yard. I'm Alan, this is uh, Joseph, and um, we're from just outside Boston. Over the years, we've collected a wide range of salvage from various demolition jobs throughout Lincolnshire and further afield. Yeah, my grandfather used to collect their uh, tractors, and basically we've carried on the here and we're still collecting it at the minute. Anytime you get to go to a demolition contractor's yard where he's got stuff and he's amenable to you coming in, perfect. Does he have explosives? <laughs> Why? Is he going to show us some today? <laughs> you can ask him. Yeah. This looks like the place, chaps. Stuff. This looks good. Alan. How are you doing? Drew, how are you doing? Very well, thank nice you. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? How are you? Um, Joseph, this must hi. be Joe. Joe, yeah. hi, 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 how are you doing? Hi, yeah. All right, Joe. Hi. How are you doing? Well, we've come to see your collection of stuff. And, uh, well, it's pretty obvious, really, where I want to yeah. go and have a look at first. Yeah. This is amazing. Where did you get all this from? Accumulation over the years. 
Yeah. How many yeah. years to get all this? Because this well, is my, fa this my father ever. started collecting, sort of. I don't know, all his life, really. Who's the enthusiast now, then? Yeah. Joseph. Yeah. Joe. Yeah. yeah. It's wonderful. So how many have you got, then, all together? Nearly 70 now. Seven? 70? Yeah. yeah. Blimey. It's great to see young guys getting interested in really old stuff. It keeps it alive and it gets other people interested. It keeps it going for another whole generation. That's incredible, isn't it? Does this one work? Yeah, yeah. You can drive this, T. Well, God, better, better than driving the van. <laughs> it's probably faster than the van. <laughs> <laughs> Serious one, Land Rover, but T will mm. tell you he's spotted it. Yeah, yeah, I was trying not to look at it. Obsessed with Land Rovers, Drew can't help taking a peek. I'm trying to resist the temptation to ask you if it's for sale because it's clearly not being used. Yeah. Go on, it, you, 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 you're going to have to, Drew. Huh? We'll never use it again. You'll never use it again? No. Oh, no. tempted. Does it run? Yeah. Yeah, Joseph will put a battery on it and you can take it for a spin if you want it. God. Got to stop buying Land Rovers. Bear in mind, it's it? not an 80 inch, right? So that's yeah. the only thing that's stopping me trying to buy it now. It's got to be an 80 inch for me. Nice got Land Rover, me. Rebecca kill you. Nice <laughs> Land Rover, Rebecca kill you. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to resist asking you. Um, oh, just curiosity, how much do you want for it? Just curiosity. I'm not. It's just more curiosity than anything. What's it worth, Joe? About four thousand. About four thousand. No, no. If it was a, an 80 inch, I'd, I'd be buying it, but mm. no. No. Chuffed that he's controlled himself, Drew moves on. So where are we going to now? You can see Joe's got a ladder. Uh, this blue container. There's a few lights there. So is this from a demolition job, what's in here? Yeah. There you go, look at those two. <coughs> Couple. I wondered if they were, there's a maker that made them called Holophane. They might be by them. These XMOD bulkhead lights came from a local RAF camp. Once cleaned and rewired, they're ideal for patio lighting and could sell for up to £195 each. What do you want for these? Here you go, T. £40 each. Mm, no, too much. I would say, to be honest, £50 for the pair is what I'd rather pay, rather than £80. Pounds. Yeah, not too far away. Drew wants to find more pieces, as it's cheaper to buy in bulk. Am I right to have a, a bit yeah, of a just wander be, just through? through? Just be careful, obviously. It's a yeah, bit sure. unsafe here. Is this the age-old adage of always get right to the back? Always get right to the back. First stuff in, usually the most important or interesting. Nothing. Just that pair of bulkheads that we found at the front. No need for that kind of language, is there? <laughs> bulkheads. Bulkheads. That's bulkheads isn't a dirty word. <laughs> oh, you bulkhead. <laughs> so, what do you reckon with these then? Where were we? You want 80, I went 50. Where yeah. do you want to meet? In the middle. Yeah. So, what's in the middle? <laughs> <laughs> Seven. No, where were we? 70 quid. Yeah. Thanks Go for on. that. That's appreciated. No, lovely. Oh, well, these down here. Yeah, at the back there. Overgrown. How's that? Can you see those, T? Yeah. These are called pier caps, because they go on the top of gate piers. People call them gate posts, but they're, oh, they're right. gate piers. And the post would go through that? Yeah, what did you say went through? A chimney? It was a chimney, yeah. There were, like, two big columns on the front of this chapel. Sort of ornamental, it was there. So, pillars that were chimneys as well? Yeah. That's yeah. great. I've not mm. seen that before. 1860, 1880, somewhere in yeah, that Yeah, about period. 1880, I would think, yeah. Maybe a little bit later. Okay. And there's a pair of them, they're in really nice condition, they're very well made, they're handmade. Look, you can see the chisel marks at the surface there. See all oh, that? Yeah. Very nice. So a guy has done that by hand, you know? Yeah. Imagine having those made today. I mean, what are, what are, you, what are these worth? I can't buy them because I can't get them on the van, but yeah. probably four to five hundred pounds for the I pair. Think, I would, in that region, yeah. yeah. I think it wouldn't um, be far away. But imagine, having, imagine trying to get one of these made today, you know? Oh, yeah. That's just a wonderful thing to save. Yeah, nice, but... Glad too heavy today. Glad I don't have to carry them. <laughs> I think they'd weigh the van down too much. And me. Think about me as well. Oh, all right, I see. Blimey, that's yeah. a big one, isn't it? Heavy. <laughs> Wanna get a break? You can try. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> a pair would be would be really desirable. Mm, they would, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's just a single. Just a singles. 
not so desirable, but it's got a lot of problems. Finial's misrim from the top, which would have been something similar to that. Broken and bent there. Rivets are popped through. That's damaged, that's broke, that's bent. A lot of work, yeah. It's a lot of work, isn't it? You've yeah. got to get that to a blacksmith. But it's a bit nice gate when it's finished. Cracking gate. I mean, yeah. it's, it's worth a lot of money, that gate done. Yeah. As mm. is now, you're just buying a bit of a project. How mm -hmm. much is it, anyway? About £500. £500, yes. Yeah. It's, a, it's So how much monetarily would you have to put into that to make it a saleable item? Um, probably 300 But then it's probably worth 1500 quid. So it's got a bit of a profit left in it, but... We can buy easier things, that's a big old lump. Got to leave it, you know, just experience says it's going to take too much to earn some money out of it. Further into the yard, Drew spots a skip containing a standout piece of decorative salvage. Do you want it out? It's good, isn't it? Roof vent? Yeah, roof vent, but it's nice. It's, it's a great colour and shape, isn't it? There's a tear there, isn't it? Is there? Oh, yeah. But, but a great shape. Is this the original paintwork, this? This isn't green? paintwork, this is patina. patina. This is the action of it being outside and exposed to rainwater for years and years and years. Crafted in an ornate North African style, this roof vent has been exposed to the elements, causing the copper to oxidise. Its unique design and colour mean it could fetch up to £450. Where did it come from? At Charrington's Brewery, Mile End Road, London. Yeah, a colleague took that one down. Yeah. Brewery, good stock. Anything from a brewery you like, don't you? Oh, yeah. yeah Most things beer. that come out of breweries yeah. uh, are <laughs> Going right. to you. Yeah. <laughs> How much for this, then, Alan? Uh, three and a half. Three and a half. It's not out of the way. I think without the damage on it, we'd easily pay that. Um, but I got a bit of work. How's £300 grab you? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Lovely, thank you. Done. Appreciate it. That's cool, isn't it? That's a nice-looking piece. Yeah, come on, let's get it on the van, then. Lovely. Shouldn't be allowed out on your own, you. I thought not. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really has been nice to meet you Great guys. Day. Joe, thank you very privilege much. Privilege to let yeah, me know, see your collection. Yeah, thank you. Great thank stuff. You. Keep up the good yeah. work. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Thanks, guys. See you again. Bye bye. Yeah. Skip Rat Pritchard again. Yeah. But now you are in that as well because you were helping. So I helped you get actually it out. got in the skip. I didn't even get in the skip. Well, uh, Joe got in the skip, but to be fair to him, it was his skip. <laughs> you were more of a skip rat than I am. <laughs> Drew just can't keep away from cars. The next day, on the way back, he decides to drop in at a car breaker's yard. It's three and a half hours away, in Whitchurch, Shropshire. And we're here to see a guy called Mario, who runs a business called uh, Ferber's. My name's Mario. Uh, we're at WJ Ferber Salvage in Shropshire. I've been doing this for 32 years and, uh, yeah, pretty tough negotiator, but we'll get there in the end. What goodies were you expecting from a, a, a metal salvages then? Well, metal, generally. Strange. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, is there going to be gold bullion lying around? <laughs> Loads of it, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you tenner for that. Shropshire, the streets are paved with gold. Yeah. Oh, this looks like it. That's huge. This can't all be there, surely. This can't all be... Blimey, it's Charlie. All there. Possibilities are endless. Right, have we got a sign for the van before we get out there? We'll turn around and there'll be a big crane carrying it off. <laughs> Pay no attention to the nasty man. Mario. Hi. Drew. How you doing? Hi. Hi, Drew. Nice Hi. to meet you. Hi, Mario. How you doing? All right. How are you doing? Not bad. So we've come for a look around. OK, yeah, well, feel free. Have a good look around. I've not been here before, so where, where should we start? Um, start in this main unit here, okay. and then um, we'll, uh, we'll find a few places for you to have a look around in. If I find anything, come find you. Come and find me, yeah. yeah. Lovely. OK. Thank Thanks. OK. So this looks like it's an insurance write-off place, isn't it? Yeah, well... Have you driven that one? Is that... <laughs> that looks like you're driving. <laughs> oh, cool, look. Blaster in the past. I nearly killed you in one of these. You did, yes. Fair play, yeah. I think we went over five times, didn't we, in one of these, and walked away unscathed. Nothing for us, mate. Nothing leaping out other than the rats. 
Back inside the warehouse, Drew and T are still on the hunt for that one-off piece. It's quite sad, that, isn't American it? American 30s job. What the hell is this? Look at it. Man, oh, man. Oh, you could live in there. Founded in America in 1899, Buick is one of the oldest car makers in the world. Fully restored, this sedan could be worth around £15,000. It's not beyond restoration, but some stuff you'd have to be really brave to want to take this thing on. All mental. Oh, here you go, what's this? Transylvania. No. Yeah. Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> 1932 <laughs> Buick from Transylvania. <laughs> I like it. So you just see Bonnie and Clyde leaping out of this, fully armed, can't you? Around the corner, Aladdin's cave just gets bigger and bigger. Look at this. That's huge. I want to shed this big, actually. Yeah, no, sure I don't, I don't want sure to. Sure, you'd big. fill it. Blimey, T. <laughs> bit of Louis XIV furniture lying Is around. It? No, it's not, mate. <laughs> I was going to say, you'd be a bit angry, wouldn't you? <laughs> if he wasn't dead. Oh, look, there's a bike especially made for people like you. That's a copy of the old monkey bike. Great little things, aren't they? It's cool. It's a later one. Still cool, yeah. though, isn't it? The early ones are, are great looking and great fun. There's nothing of any worth up here. No chopping fingers off in here, Drew. Wow. Right at the back, something catches Drew's eye. God, he's got some really old car parts in there. Mm. Pub sign. Let's have a quick look at that. Oh. You right getting in there? What is it? Pub sign. Pub sign. Mm -hmm. Middle sex. Look at like the best made pub sign I've ever seen. It's just the workmanship's astonishing for a pub sign. Look at that. I've seen some good ones, but that is an absolute belter. It's just in this beautiful English arts and crafts. Style lettering on here. Look, it's all gilded as well. Middlesex arms. That is a fabulous piece of work. That would have taken like days. Mm. Ah, this one's complete. I'm just thinking, like, if we can bend that straight, we've got the other one. They're super decorative I mean... item, but in a such bad state. It's a good job my thin physique gets me around here, isn't it, really? Are we too old and fat for this? <laughs> I am. Body of a god. Sadly, it's Buddha. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that's going to make me buy those is price, if the cheap will take them. God, things you find. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mario, you've, yeah. got, you've got in there two um, very worn out, knackered, uh, wrought iron pub signs with loads of writing on them. Yeah, should we have a look? See which ones yeah. you mean? You probably picked the two best ones, have you? The best ones? God, I hope and found the worst. <laughs> They'll be taking a whole wadge of rust off your hands. These things here. The idea for pub signs started with the Romans, who displayed vine leaves to show that an establishment sold wine. Restored, these 19th century beauties could fetch up to £300 each. To be honest, it's all down to price. If they're really cheap, I'd buy them, otherwise I'm going to have to leave them, because it's more curiosity with these. OK. What do you think? 200 a piece so per... per... Hang on, I've just come over all funny. He's impressed, he's impressed, <laughs> yeah, I can he tell. 200 piece, do you know where yeah. I'm at? Do I really want to know? 25 quid. Never. Yes. You could weigh him in for that. You couldn't. You could. You could not, they're not that heavy. I'm serious, I'm they're absolutely serious, they're they not are. that they're, heavy. They're 25 pound and buy you nothing. How much is rest a kilo now then? <laughs> Same as metal. <laughs> <laughs> they're like they've been in the bloody sea. No, you can imagine there, you clean them off in no time at all. I didn't know the Titanic had a pub. I mean, look at him. So, yeah, so that's where I'm at. 25 quid, yeah. 25 quid, 50 no. quid. OK, definitely a no. No? No. We'll okay. leave him. Lovely. Right. Thanks, anyway. OK. Nobody is going to pay £200 for those. Well, I'm certainly not. So I just go straight in, just for the jugular, 25 quid. Determined to carry on searching, they find even more jam-packed places to explore. Oh, I'll I go have to go me. first. No, I'll, right? go for, I'll go first. Blimey tea, look at this. Every car stereo ever made. Wow. <laughs> hey. Look. Oh, more lights. How many is that?
white. Is that good? That's good. Is that unusual? Is that because it's unusual? unusual. Grab this, right? We'll go and ask Mario see if there's any more. Because I don't think there's any. Green one there, is that? I'll take the green one as well. I've got I've got a couple of hundred of these green ones now. But well, you never know if they're the right money. Oh. Mario. Yeah. These. Yeah. Have you got any more? Um. Yes, we have. We have. We've got quite a few. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. How many do you want? How many have you got? Don't what? know. Probably about 20, maybe more. In white? Uh, white and green, I would think, but I'm not sure. We'd have to go and check. They've been there for ages, but they're from up here anyway, okay. so they'll be different colours. Cool, yeah, yeah, Can lead on, yeah, please. Okay. That's it. Oh, yeah, now you're talking. Yeah, one or two of them lamps for you there, Drew. Yeah. Right, desk down to condition then now, Mario. They're all like new. <laughs> cool. OK. These 1960s industrial lights used to hang in Ferber's warehouse. Restored and in working order, they could command up to £195 each. I'd be interested in all of them, the white ones and the green ones. Yeah. They're not in the best condition, to be honest. They are a bit... OK. They are a bit beaten up. What sort of money are we looking at if I took all of the ones here that are that, that style. Well, we thought about £50 a piece, so what did you think? Not in this condition. I know where you're coming from. If they're, like, new, maybe. Mm. But, really, I'm at sort of £25 a pop in this condition. Yeah. Well, we'll call them 35. 35 a go. Can we do 30? Mm. Come on, don't be hard with that. 35 <laughs> a piece. I'm being 35 fair. 35 a piece. Yeah, yeah, I know you've got to make something out of them as well, but £35. you never see them again, will you? When they've gone, they've gone. Well, you'll never get any There's more. a lot of them about... I'll tell you what I'll but do. You've got them all. I'll tell you what I'll do. I have to, I've got a lot. <laughs> I've got a lot. I'll do £35 each on the white ones mm -hmm. and 30 on the green ones, because the green ones I've got lots of. These I haven't got lots of. OK, we'll go for that. Deal? Yeah, deal. OK. Thank you. Right, let's get them out. Good colour. What are you looking for there, Drew? It's looking for the maker's name. I can't remember. Ollie can remember every single one and I can never remember them. They are very cool, though. Love the colour. When you're presented with the right thing, just buy it. Don't mess about. Get it for the right money, but just buy it. Okay, Happy. Good. If you just Happy have them cleaned and uh, pop them in the van. Yeah, once yeah. they're rewired, ring me. <laughs> That's it. They'll be ready in uh, a couple of weeks. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Happy with those. Happy. Okay. Yeah, great stuff. Thanks. Okay. Will you load them up yourself? Yeah, you? we'll do yeah. all that. All right. Now, what you've mistakenly not done today is use my clothes to clean these. <laughs> I think you've missed the, missed the trick there. That pub sign, shame about that. You know, it's one of those things that it deserves to survive. Yeah. Purely because of the workmanship that somebody's put into it in the past. It's interesting. But it is absolutely yeah. shot. Well, it's knackered. Knackered. And then there's very knackered. Yes. Yeah. Drew and T head home with a good haul from their two-day road trip. Back at base, Rebecca, Gavin and John wonder what will be in the van this time. You can guess what we've got. Could they be industrial lamps? <laughs> oh, but good industrial lamps. We got them from a um, WJ Ferber, who's a car breaker. And the best thing about them is... They're different. Because they are... Green. Come on! Because they're big. No! Because they're white. Look! I only can see one white one. Look, there's loads. Aren't they great shape? They are, actually. They are. We've got 11 of the white ones. So they're not going to take long, so we can just get stuck straight into those. We went to see a guy called Alan Thompson and his son, Joe, who lived in, like, a breaker's yard. That's fantastic. Love the colour. Nice, isn't it? Love Damage the there. I'll sort that out. Straight that out. It's just a roof vent. Construction's beautiful, but mainly the colour and the size, so it's got a lot going for it. Probably get it on the website today. Yeah, we will actually. get it on the website today. But you see it now, the colour inside is just so good. Yeah. So just give me an hour on it and I'll, I'll turn it round. So I was going to say to Gavin, don't rub it. It's great. <laughs> we've also got these. Oh, yeah, we've got the bulkheads. Well, XMOD, and they've got this sort of prismatic lens. Take the glass out. Polish. 
polish, cleaning, and Ollie will sort these out in no time at all. £70, pounds, £35 pounds each. It's not bad. That's all right. No, that's fine, and we haven't, we haven't got any bulkheads in stock at all. Got lots and lots of saleable stock, a lot of stuff for the lads to restore, met some good people, and uh, we can start to sell this stuff pretty soon. So, all in all, very good week. Handyman John gets the lamps from Ferber's ready for the electrician to restore. Then we'll have them rewired and uh, we'll get them into the shop for sale. A day later, they're in full working order. These will go online now and um, we'll get them sold as fast as possible. I'm not going to hang all of them. I've just hung five in the showroom to give a feel of what a run would look like. I'm really, really pleased with them. Great, interesting shape. And um, I don't think they'll be hanging around for much longer. The next day, Drew and Gavin get to work on the roof vent. You could spend hours messing around with it and getting it perfect, but I'd rather not. I'd rather just leave it. Yeah, minimum intervention restoration is probably what we're about more than anything. Perfect. Alex, the French polisher, makes the finishing touches on the chest from Pennard House. I think it'll take a second coat, but we'll be able to match the exact finish, the exact colour, and it'll just bring them back to looking more like a pair again. After a hard day's work, they're restored to their former glory. I'm, I'm well pleased with those, Alex. Yeah, nice Perfect. Stuff. They just look untouched, don't they? Yeah. Don't look like anybody's done anything to them. It's always difficult to buy off other traders, and it was tough negotiations with all of it, really. But with the items I got, I ended up getting at a great price for all of them. So that sort of shows the difference between one person's aesthetic and another, and their valuation of something and, and mine.